Hey guys, welcome back. So I was challenged yesterday by Declan Hage. He suggested using a slime and honey platform to make a quarry that picks up a 12 by 12 layer of blocks, lifts it up and transports it to a TNT station where the blocks are destroyed and stored. Mostly for fun, but I think it would still have a use for people who want to mine out a clean square shape without filling in TNT holes in the walls made by conventional TNT diggers. Right, sounds reasonable, but I don't think it would be too useful to make a machine for that, because the alternatives are just, yeah, better. I mean, 12 by 12 down to bedrock should take you about half an hour to dig. So there's not a huge amount of blocks that you need to remove there. It's probably not better to make a machine. But the challenge sounded interesting. I haven't done anything with the honey blocks yet. The, and the challenge, yeah, that sounds something I could easily do. And it should also look quite cool in the end. All right, let's try this. So that's the pattern I want to go with for the platform. Just simple squares of 2 by 2 honey and slime in an alternating way. This should actually work. I also tried other shapes. So I tried strips of blocks. They exceeded the push limit on the outside. I had to go down to three and yeah, it seems like by using four blocks uh, this could be one of the best patterns. Alright, yeah, this would also work out on the side. So Declan was asking for 12 by 12 platform, um, but we're just using a 10 by 10 since we're also gonna grab the blocks here on the side of course. So in the end we, we kind of will make a 12 by 12 of the corners, uh, not getting mined, but I don't think there's a good way around this. Okay, so here this outside square would have four blocks at the bottom, four blocks at the side, and four slime blocks at 12. So it's still pushable and pullable. All right, then I would say next step is now adding the flying machines to the platform. It didn't take long and I'm already finding the honey block super useful. So I got two examples here. I built this self-returning flying machine here at the top uh, with honey blocks instead of slime blocks. And there's two reasons. So here I can power this piston um, without powering the trapdoor because well, you can't power the honey block, but the piston is still powered by QC. So yeah, let's do a quick example. But the trapdoor isn't powered. Exactly what I want there, perfect. Similar example here at the top. So if I would use slime blocks, then I would, of course, power the slime block and power both sticky pistons there, which I don't want. I only want to power the single sticky piston there. So I can just use honey and power the piston again by QC, uh, but the honey, of course, doesn't get powered. Yeah, perfect. So pretty much what I always said, the honey block doesn't really let us do new stuff, but it makes a lot of stuff easier and we can build more compact flying machines. I'm quite sure I could actually also do the whole project just with slime blocks only, but the honey block just makes it so much easier. So we're ready to launch the flying machine. So this won't be super practical, but definitely very satisfying to watch, I could assume. All right, here we go. Down he goes, grabs the box and cuts out a slice and flies it back up. Perfect. So now it's coming back up the second time. Now we got the full load. <laughs> we also got the blocks on the outside. All right, so next step, we actually need to figure out how we can get rid of those blocks. Should be quite simple since it's a 12 by 12 platform, uh, a piston could still push all of those blocks. So I guess it would be kind of the simplest if you would have pistons here at the top that would just push down the blocks. Uh, so basically a full ring around it. And then you would have like this, yeah, almost 12, 12 platform of blocks. Could have a, another flying machine just pushing over. I think that, that that's the way to go. The ring of pistons was added. And now we need to deal with this platform. We just need to push it to the side and blow it up somehow. Right, and yeah, <laughs> already started. But yeah, this is really the blessing, the curse of the honey block that it can't be powered. This layout, of course, wouldn't work because you can't power the honey. <laughs> Let me redo this real quick. So this looks a bit better. This should hopefully work. Let's try it out. Okay, just pushing the platform to the side. I'm not even sure what to do with it. Probably just blow it up. Ideally, it would probably make it like a TNT blast chamber and some sophisticated stuff, but I think we just blow it up. <laughs> Maybe we can have some water stream below to at least collect the items, but yeah, I'm not gonna overcomplicate it for this. Okay, she returns. Then could launch this one again. The thing with TNT is that I wanna explode it for 
certain distance to the blocks. If you have it directly sitting on top of the stone blocks, for example, here, you would usually only yeah, create a 3x3 three three hole because the rays from the TNT don't reach that far. So I'm just gonna summon the TNT entity a little bit higher, zero fuse. You can see this takes us way more blocks. So we'll need to drop the TNT and it has to explode it just above the stone, take out as many blocks as possible. Let's actually use the honey here as well, so we can make the TNT glide down some honey blocks and explode just at the right height. So this should work. <laughs> right here we get the big one. Let's see if this works. Okay, blew up everything. That worked fine. The reason why I got those repeaters here at the top is to spread out the explosions a little bit uh, in order to prevent the items from being blown up. So even if you would activate all the dispensers at the same time and all the TNT explodes in the same tick, uh, it would still take out the items. So you can see this here. Just gonna drop two TNT and blow up this lapis ore. And you will see you won't get any items despite it being 100% drop rate in a game right now. I also show this if you would just use a single TNT. And of course we would get the items. So we should actually have everything in place right now. Let's try this out once again. Everything is still a bit manual. Still have to wire this up. Just wanna see if it works. Okay, Let's send the machine back down. Grab the next slice. That is very satisfying, for sure. Okay, now we go up. What I hooked up directly is the piston setup. Okay, that works. Here I actually had to add like a little double piston extender so the slime blocks wouldn't pick up the pistons. Everything got pushed down automatically. Okay, okay, okay. The next step in doing the wiring would then just be hook up this part here in the back that flies it out. And we can probably just add another server here on the side to trigger the dispensers at the top with some delay. Okay, let's trigger this part now. Okay, didn't fire in all locations this time. It's a bit odd. Oh, because the wiring is a bit stupid. Yeah, QC and dispensers don't go well together. Should have used slabs or glass blocks there. Okay, can easily fix that. I'm going to just activate this another time, so we can also get rid of the remaining blocks. Okay, that was quite good, hopefully. <laughs> right, let's actually check in the chest at the bottom. If you got some items so far. Yep, looks good. <laughs> got some cobblestone and dirt now. Alright, so I'm gonna wire up the rest as well, and then the machine should run automatically. So I just added a little bit of redstone wire and this should work now automatically. Let's launch it. Yeah, I really can't get enough of <laughs> this machine grabbing the blocks. That's the best part we did. <laughs> Alright. There we go. Okay. Now I just need to wait until the flying machine on the side is launched. The blocks are getting pushed down. And here we go. This observer will, just in the right position, activate this line once. Just stop right in front of the block. Okay. Getting the TNT. Yeah, looks good. Everything got blown up. Okay, and also this observer will then trigger the main machine again. And now it goes down, grabs the next slice. Right, so this is working well, um, but I should definitely also mention that we're kind of applying a large scale solution to a small scale problem. This is like if you would order an excavator for your backyard. Um, <laughs> it's it's overkill. It's not really worth it. So the effort to set all of this up will probably be better spent just setting up a beacon yourself and, and mining out a hole on your own. That's for sure. But it was a fun challenge. Um, in case you're looking for an actual mining machine that would deal with a large-scale area and would, would actually be less effort 
than doing it yourself. I can yeah, link a few videos to, to uh, the Golden Quarries um, in a video description. Oh, there was a leftover block. That's not good. Maybe we need another dispenser there. Uh, let me actually add another one. Okay, I would say I'll add another TNT dispenser and then we can do a little time lapse. machine unfortunately got stuck again because there was a block remaining behind. Well, let's be honest, the TNT system at the top here is complete rubbish. I should have made a proper TNT blast chamber, but it would have been a video on its own, kinda. Um, it's definitely on my to-do list to make an updated TNT blast chamber soon. Alright, but also I really don't want to continue with this project because, as I explained, it's not really worth it. And apart from this issue here, there's also a lot of other issues I should mention. For example, what if you have some gravel in there? Hmm, I was supposed to get that out. <laughs> so there's a lot of actually issues. But what if you have a non movable block like obsidian in there? Machine will break. A spawner, dungeon, a chest, machine will break. Even water and lava that forms new cobble will break it. Even a cave at the moment because those modules don't work independently. So it could actually help me with some cave there that some of the 2x2 two two, um, yeah, sticky blocks would move further down than the others. And then the top you already have an issue. So there's just a lot of unsolved problems with this concept and it's not really worth it, let's be honest. If you want a full-blown mining machine that works on a larger scale, that doesn't have any issues with uh, caves, with lava, with water, with gravel, sand, that can handle all of those issues, check out the link in the description. But mining at 12 by 12 automatically, yeah, doesn't seem like that's worth it. Alright, hope you still had fun with this video. Thanks so much for watching. See you in the next one. Bye bye.